Does anyone know what a tomato, a soybean, and a McDonald's french fry all have in common? They have all been genetically modified. A genetically modified food is a food that has been transformed at some point in the production process, whether from when it was a seed all the way through the production process at some point. Um, some examples of those are corn, soybean, sugar beet, sugar cane, squash, and tomato. The reason these companies are turning to uh, genetically modified seeds are to increase the yield as well as to increase the um, shelf life of these crops and also the um, size by hormone injection as well as temperature tolerance to make them tolerant to the different climates as well as pesticide resistance. As of 2011, the United States is one of the top leading countries in the world to use genetically modified products. These products hit, hit the market in 1996 and I feel they should be pulled because of the risk to humans, to the economy, as well as the environment. Some human risks are um, the supplement, uh, back in 1989, it was a supplement called L-tryptophan that came to the market. What happened was the demand was so high for this product, the manufacturer changed up the genetic makeup of the drug in order to increase um, the supply and get the product out there faster to make, meet that demand. What happened in changing that genetic ma makeup is toxic effects came to humans. So you had 37 reported deaths and over 1,500 people suffer from side effects for this drug. Then you go on to the superbug infections. Superbug is when a gene is transformed from one organism into another. So if you have a bug that is resistant to an antibiotic, that gets on a tomato and infects that tomato with a the bacteria, then we're eating those tomatoes, or that, that crop. <clears throat> Where that comes into play as far as affecting us is um, the government doesn't know if the drugs that are available today are able to keep up with all these diseases and bacteria that are forming. <clears throat> so there's an issue there as far as keeping up with the um, drug history and getting in drugs fast enough that are able to combat the diseases. Moving on to the environmental factors, you have a cross-pollination issue. So it's the same as if a bee were to land on a flower, take that pollen to another flower, then you have the cross-pollination. Same, same to play if you, um, with the farms. If you have a farm that is next to another farm, one is using genetically modified seeds, another one is using non-genetically modified seeds. So the seeds are planted, wind comes along and blows those seeds over to the non-genetically modified farm. So that's where the cross-pollination comes into play. The next is the economy. Anytime you make something in mass production, what happens to the quality of the drug? It goes down. So same, another example for that would be clothing. When clothing got moved overseas, the quality of that clothing went down. The consumer was happy because the price went down and the producer was happy because their profit went up. <clears throat> but the quality factor is the issue there. Um, let's see. Then you have the government has set up three different agencies in order to help regulate um, this genetically modified, modifying issue that they're doing with these foods. So you have um, the USDA, which oversees the meat, the poultry, the eggs, and the animals and of course the humans that consume it. Then you have the EPA, which is the Environmental Protection Agency, and they are out to govern the pesticides and test those pesticides that they're using on these crops. And then you have the FDA, who's out of the Food and Drug Administration. They are out to um, ensure the safety of the animals which are producing these, um, the, the meats and the eggs um, and the humans that are consuming it. So in closing, I uh, just want to let everyone know that you do have the option um, to know what you are eating. The labels, they have been really good lately about making sure that you read labels and putting um, like whether a product is organic or not. Um, say for example, a bottle of ketchup, I saw a bottle of ketchup in the store the other day and they were very proud to put that they were um, there were no high fructose corn syrup in there. But if you look at that, that label, they're using sugar. 
and they're using tomatoes, of course, that's the main ingredient in ketchup, both of those are genetically modified. So if you don't see that non-genetically modified label, then you know at some point in their production process on that label, you're going to see a genetically modified um, substance. So um, it's just like the, uh, I would say, if you don't buy a product and it sits on the shelf, that producer is going to want to do something to get you to buy the product. So if you're not buying products, so say if you don't buy a product that is not genetically modified, then they need to do something to keep up with the demand of the consumer. Because of that, a group of citizens got together and developed the Non-HMO Project. It's a nonprofit organization just to get the awareness out there and let people know that, um, that you do have a say-so in what you, what you put in your body. And um, for that reason, they have the labels on the outside that do say non-GMO, which I encourage you all to look for and to buy. So, does anyone have any questions? Uh, yes, <clears throat> I got a question. Uh, the uh, the way that these uh, crops are grown, the produce, versus the uh, organic and the uh, one that you say that's been uh, modified, uh, what's, what's the difference on that? What's your opinion on that? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, just because an, a product is organic does not necessarily mean it's been, it has not been genetically modified. So there, there is a difference there. You can still have an organically grown tomato that has still been genet from a genetically modified seed. So it's kind of two different things at hand. But you can have an organic product, of course, using a genetically non-genetically modified seed. So there's two different labels there that you're looking for on a product, whether it's organically grown and then whether it's genetically modified or not. Okay. There are countless amount of um, backyard gardens across the United States. Are you saying that those um, gardens are in danger of um, cross pollination if they are in the vicinity, uh, say uh, big farms? Absolutely, absolutely. Just because even if you go to um, Walmart and buy seeds, you're still using genetically modified seeds. So if you have a person next door to you that's trying to have their organic, non-genetically modified garden there, there's still still risk at hand to be able to be cross-pollinated, absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are we the only country that's modifying our food this way? We are not. We are not. We're one of the top countries, but there are countries all over the world that are using this. You have to think of... Um, as far as third world countries, this is, they think this is good to them because they're able to feed a bunch of people for cheaper. But and because we are kind of ahead of the game and doing, we have government regulations and testing as far as drugs that we have available to us, it's, we're kind of ahead of that per se. So we, we see that in what's happening, what's evolving from using these products where these third world countries don't have these regulations and testing to be able to come up with why these people are getting sick. There's a, <clears throat> we know that they're opening a lot of whole food places. Mm -hmm. Are all those products in there, to your knowledge, uh, products that have uh, been grown, you know, non-genetic? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mostly that's why you'll see, um, that's their big advertisement is organic products. And most of them actually... It's good. You'll be able to see, and even like locally grown, they will advertise uh, locally grown. But and people think that's great. They want to run and buy locally grown, but it doesn't make it any more healthy than coming from California if it's not using a genetically modified product and not being grown organically. Okay. Uh, a while back, we had a scare with the cantaloupe, mm -hmm. uh, and they were able. A lot of people got sick, and a few people died. Does the FDA and those other agencies have a, a tracking system where they can find out which farms are growing, which uh, produce? Absolutely. Um, in fact, just whenever I was in Walmart the other day, you'll see it'll say exactly, this one was a homegrown product, but they do, as far as the number, they do track where they're pulling those in from in those farms so they can investigate those people and see what they are doing as far as the growing process. Um, as far as pesticides and things like that, so that's something that the EPA is really big on. 
All right. I wanted to thank you guys for coming out tonight. Really appreciate it.